Hi, this is Sentry. Today I'm going to tell you the true story of the fall and rise of our beloved national bird, the bald eagle. What many of you may not know is that half a century ago, our national bird, the symbol of freedom in America, almost went extinct. In the 1700s, during early exploration, 300,000 to 500,000 eagles could be found across North America, and that wouldn't change for hundreds of years. But the eagle's downfall began in the early 20th century. The state of Alaska is an important breeding area for the bald eagles. It has the largest population of eagles out of all US states. In early 1900s, Alaska fox farmers were complaining that the bald eagles are taking their young blue foxes, and the fishermen in Alaska accused eagles of killing the spawning salmon. And because of these claims, even though largely discredited, Alaska imposed a bounty on bald eagles. The bounty started in 1917 as 50 cents per pair of eagle talons. This was $10 in today's money. In 1923, the bounty increased to $1, and 1949 to $2, even though in the 1940s it was already illegal federally in the United States to take or kill bald eagles. This bounty would be equivalent to $22 today. So it was significant enough for the farmers to want to keep killing eagles. Even the US Fish and Wildlife Service threatened with federal actions against Alaska. And finally, after several conservation protests, in 1953, the bounty was removed by the so-called Eagle Bill. The Eagle Bill passed practically unanimously. The bounty had lasted 36 years and more than 120,000 eagles were killed for the bounty, and way more without collection of the bounty. Meanwhile, in 1939, Swiss chemist called Paul Hermann Müller was researching chemicals for insecticides. There was a major food shortage in Switzerland because of crops being destroyed by insects, and Mr. Müller wanted to find a solution. He discovered that the chemical DDT was amazing against insects. He even won a Nobel Prize in 1948 for his discovery. He was celebrated a hero for eliminating malaria in Greece. He thought that DDT was quick, powerful, long-lasting, cheap to produce, and caused little to no harm to plants and animals. Or so he thought. Turns out, DDT is very bad for large birds, and the effect of DDT is much larger than the fields that were sprayed with it. The effect is called bioconcentration or biomagnification. The chemical starts in small amounts in bugs and plants in the bottom of the food chain. It moves up the food chain and it gets more and more concentrated. This is because the species above, such as birds, eat hundreds of fish and other small animals that contain small amounts of the chemical. The chemical stays in the birds. And the birds live long, so they eat a little bit every day for 20 years. The result of this effect is that even a small contamination of an environment ends with lots of chemicals in large birds. The tricky part is that the chemical doesn't kill the birds, so it's very hard to track the effect. The DDT affects egg production and makes the birds sterile. It makes the eggshells thinner, so then the eggs will not be strong enough for incubation. The birds will literally sit down and break their own eggs. The result of these effects, the Alaska bounties, DDT and other pollutants and destruction of habitat, by 1950s, the eagle population had declined to less than 10,000 pairs. And by 1960s, only a little more than 400 pairs were left. This is a devastating change of population. Less than 0.2% of eagles were left. But things were about to get better. Rachel Louise Carson was an American marine biologist, author, and a conservationist. 
In September 27, 1962, she published a book called Silent Spring. She documented the adverse effect of pesticides. Her scientific knowledge and poetic writing became accessible to wide audience, and Carson's work had a powerful impact on starting environmental movements in America and even globally. The importance of her writing is too big to even properly talk about in this video. Largely because of these movements, in 1966, Congress passed Endangered Species Preservation Act. This act permits listing of native US animal species as endangered and setting limited protections on these animals. The first list was published 1967 under this act. It listed 78 animals, one of them being the bald eagle. Finally, in summer 1972, EPA Environmental Protection Agency announced cancellation of most uses of the chemical DDT, effectively banning it. This is based on scientific findings about the dangers of DDT and the fact that there were already effective and less harmful alternatives available. DDT is now banned or discontinued globally, except for small-scale disease control uses. By 1982, only a decade after DDT was banned, eagle egg productivity was back to the levels prior to DDT. And by 1995, eagles were classified from endangered to only threatened. And on a cheerful day in 2007, they were completely removed from lists and classified as low concern. Yay! Nowadays, bald eagles are once again plentiful. They are found in all of the contiguous United States, Alaska, most of Canada, and northern Mexico. Their estimated breeding population is 200,000 or even 250,000. It's hard to know because precise population and nest counts haven't even been made after 2009 because the species is no more in danger. The bald eagle is saved. Sometimes we can take our national bird for granted. But the, it is important to remember that we can enjoy these birds around us today because of a huge effort in nature conservation. The bald eagle is one of the biggest success stories in species recovery. It is important for all of us to care about the animals around us and keep doing research on how we can be better for them. I hope you enjoyed my story about one of my favorite birds. I'm truly grateful that I live in a place where I can see these amazing animals all around me and take pictures and share them with all of you. If you want to learn more, I've linked some of my sources in the description. Thank you for listening. If you have any suggestions on what I should talk about next, leave a comment. Talk to you again soon.